Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another taboo or oddly specific reading recommendation, I don't know, but this one today we're going to be talking about blood play or sharp objects or knife play. We're kind of rounding this all together. Um, yeah, this is, <laughs> this one is a taboo rec that I, you know, I don't specifically go search out for these ones for that, but these are going to be ones that have had it in it and I found to be pretty sexy. Um, and these aren't all even books that were necessarily like high on my list, but they have this taboo in them. I don't know how else to explain this. So I do have 10 recommendations for this. Now, the amount or level of this kink happening in here is going to vary a lot. So I'm basing this as I do with the other taboo recs off of the Goodreads list, as well as a few that I already knew that it existed. So just know that that these will have varying levels of it. Maybe they just involve the like holding of said object to someone or they may involve a the actual bloodletting, okay? So this one can be extremely taboo for some people. Sometimes this involves licking of it, rubbing around of it, it's a thing. So we're gonna go through these. This is gonna be one of my quicker videos because some of these I actually read quite a long time ago. So again, I don't remember the exact specifics, but we will start with two of them that I remember quite vividly because I own them and they're actually in the cover of this. So the first one and the one that kind of like inspired me to do this is going to be Den of Vipers. Sorry, the light's going to make it tough. This is the first reverse harem I ever read and probably still one of my favorites. Like I've only read like a couple handfuls of reverse harem and this is this one is amazing. This is a Mafia reverse harem. There's not any sword crossing, but there is a couple like, there is a couple like group scenes in this one. Um, this is about Roxy, who actually owns her own bar and is this really badass, kind of crazy chick who her father sells her out to the Vipers, which is kind of a Mafia adjacent group. They are a crime group. They're kind of sort of Mafia. I wouldn't call them Mafia the way some of our other guys are and particularly there is a member of this harem that many people will be familiar with if they read it and that is diesel and diesel is the the torturer of the group and this is probably the most extreme of blood play that i've ever read like with knives and copious fluids so this could gross you out it could be too much or it could be delightfully what you want so lots of trigger warnings for this obviously so check those out and then the other one which i would consider this is one of my favorite books i've read this year this was a six star read for me um but it also involves um you know a little bit of carving and such and that would be dead man walking by Jana darling this is book six in um the fallen men series of hers this is a motorcycle club mc I'm having people not knowing what MC means, which I understand, but also it makes me laugh a little bit because I'm like, mm. but Motorcycle Club series, Priest is the uh, enforcer slash torturer for this group. And he falls for B, who Beatrice, who is the younger sister of his uh, president's wife. Um, the Motorcycle Club president has a very young wife. That is another book in the series, actually. And B is the puritan or so it would seem younger sister who definitely has a thing for priest and um priest has a thing for using his knives and there are some great scenes of b and him indulging in that play together um those are the ones as i said that i have the most like feeling for um some of these other ones i'll tell you kind of how i felt about them as we go but if you are looking purely to try more of this taboo of this kink, I believe these books, again, believe because I'm going off a Goodreads word for quite a few of them. So don't hold it against me, but here we go. There is Lap of Luxury by Brianna Hale. This is an age gap. This is a captor captive. 
Um, our heroine is just like a secretary for this hero's brother. And when the brother like betrays the other brother, <laughs> he kidnaps his secretary. Um, and there are some, she ends up being someone who's kind of turned on by violence. She didn't know this was a thing for her. So she gets kidnapped by him and taken to his yacht and they play some fucked up mind games together. That happens. Cruel Idols by Sorka Black. So this is one on the list that I will say was not a favorite of mine because of the kind of BDSM that was used in here. But this is actually an MMF um, and the two males are both authors and our heroine is I don't even think she knows fully who the hero is. I can't totally remember, but she ends up getting kidnapped by one of the heroes because she thinks that, or he thinks that she's trying to steal information about his next book. And so she ends up being kind of both of their like kinky slave for a while. And I believe there was some sharp object play happening in this one. Um, the things that I didn't quite like about it is that it is a, there's some pet play in this book and not the cute kind <laughs> that I like. So there were some other, there were some aspects of their play that were a lot. There's also a lot of CNC in here and it's a very like the rough end of CNC. And don't ask me why CNC, consensual non-consent, bugs me more than like non you know, rape does. But the way it was done in this one, it was very uncomfortable for me, but then there is The Devil by Ashley Jade. This was kind of funny. A lot of people have been recommending this to me lately. And I was like, y'all, I read this book way before it was a thing. <laughs> this was a book that I, this is part of a duet by Ashley Jade. And this has um, some MM stuff in it. It has uh, threesome scenes in it. It has age gap stuff. There is water sports that happen in this. There is so many different kinds of kink that happen in this. And I just remember reading it and being really shocked by what was happening because I read it so long ago. So Ashley Jade is really kind of getting kind of resurgence due to like TikTok and stuff, which is totally great. I love when that happens for authors, but I definitely read a, uh, some of her stuff like back in the day, right? I read it back in the day before um, everyone knew about it, so. Sweet Captivity by Julia Sykes. This one, I really love this book. And I actually didn't quite remember the sharp object or like blood play that happened in this one. So when I saw it on the Goodreads list, I was like, oh, I guess it did. Um, this one is very interesting. So this FBI agent who, if you love Criminal Minds, think of kind of like Penelope, but a little more fit because she, she is a field agent now. She used to just be a technician behind the desk there's a plane going overhead, <laughs> but now she becomes a field agent and she ends up getting kidnapped by the mob um, and being given to one of their enforcers to kind of like break her. And he ends up wanting to make her his, his, his pet, his baby girl. And she's actually into a lot of the kinky things that he's doing because she actually had already kind of been experimenting with things on her own. And now it's like, well, I don't have any choice because I'm his prisoner. So I can try out some of these things and it's not really my fault type of thing. I actually really, really love this book. Whispers in the Dark by Letitia Newton. Okay, so this is a book I actually read with the Taboo Book Club um, back when I kind of did that with Tamika. When it first started, we did it together and then um, I kind of just ended up doing other things on my own with this. Um, but this one we read when we did, what was the theme for this one? I can't remember. But this one was, this book was, whoa, this is crazy. This is about a woman. It's told in kind of two parts. This is about a woman who's kidnapped when she is like 18 and held captive by this crazy man and his son. The son is kind of forced to be there as well. But the father will like kidnap women, torture them, and he wants to teach his son how to do it. 
So at a point in this book, they end up, like she ends up escaping and with the help of the son of this serial killer. And then she had kind of played some mind games with this son so that he would help her. And so once she's free, she's like, well, I obviously don't want to be with this guy. But the thing is, she really does have feelings for him. So years later, she's a psychologist who now she hunts for men who have tendencies towards raping women and then she is a serial killer of them. Now, this isn't no like warm and fuzzy book. This book has so many trigger warnings. Obviously, this has rape, captivity. Um, there is a like abortion that is done terrifyingly and I understand why it happens in this story, but absolute trigger warnings for that. This is a serial killer romance. This is them like discovering that they want to be this together. Um, and there is also some knife play and blood stuff that ends up happening in here. So I'm telling you, this is one of the darker books that I've read and I've read the entire Deliver series by Pam Godwin. So just know that, but there you go. There is Church by Stylo Phantom. This is one, I I read this, but I don't completely remember this one. This was when I binged all of Stylo Phantom's books. And I believe this is a stepbrother romance where the hero is a psychopath and his new stepsister really like falls for him. And they may or may not be planning murders together. So there's that one. Then there is Tears of Tess by Pepper Winters. This is a book that's been around for a long time. There is certain kinds of knife and blood play in this one. There's also branding that happens in this series. So know that. Um, this is a captor captive. She is kidnapped on vacation and uh, forced into slavery and she ends up in the hands of a guy named Q. Now Q has many layers to him. I don't want to spoil anything for you. I've actually only read the first like two and a half books in this series because I found it to be a darker place than I wanted to be in. Now again, I enjoy dark books as we're seeing going through this list, but I like there to be more hope at the end of the tunnel than this. And I know that that will happen eventually. Like I've read some stuff too that like, Pepper kept writing books because she wanted them to have a happily ever after and then she kept like doing shit to them and I was like just stop torturing these people they've been through enough um but there is some sharp object play happening in in this one and then the last one I want to mention and this one is I wouldn't like call it fun but I feel like it is kind of a lighter one than the other ones we've talked about and I wanted to mention it even though it falls into paranormal realm of it. And obviously when you start talking about like blood play, like paranormal has a lot of that if you're reading like vampire books. But I still wanted to throw this one in there to kind of end this on a higher note. And that's Queen Takes Nights by <laughs> uh, Jolie Supercart. So this is the first book in like the vampire um, queen, the vampire queen series. And this is about a girl who it turns out she is a vampire queen and she's being hunted by these different beings that want her blood. And so she needs to have this like coven of, uh, of like blood support around her. So she starts to build a harem. So this is a reverse harem, but it's also like all genders end up being in her harem and all different creatures and things like that. And so this is a very sexy series. There are copious amounts of fluids in this series. Um, there are dragon shifters and there are sphinxes and there are vampires and there are all these things. And then there's our queen who drinks all their blood and there are orgies and there are lots of things and it's magical in some aspects and bonkers in others. I read the first five in this series. I believe there's like six in the initial arc and then there's like spin-off things of it. And maybe I'll go back to this someday, but I feel like at one point the harem was so big that I start to lose connection with the individuals. And that's kind of where reverse harem kind of breaks for me is I can like it if there's up to a certain amount of members. And then I start to like, well, now none of you are individual to me anymore. And so it doesn't work as well. But 
anyway, I hope this was informative. I hope you find some taboo reads you'd like to try. Um, let me know what other oddly specific trope or specific taboo you'd like me to do in the future. This is the third one I've done that's kind of a specific taboo. Um, if I've read it, that's the thing. So there we go. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch some more of them right now. Bye.